welcome back to another video of H&H &H Express Model and Skill Trains. As you can see, it's a little bit of a mess here. So there are a lot of parts lying around. And I was continuing working on the train station area with the road. But you may have seen the live stream last uh, Tuesday that I was going to work on the new control board. And I did already add a little bit more. So here you can see it. I have added the uh, fuses over here towards the junction boxes here and uh, we're gonna continue work on that. So I will make some plays here and then we will see how far we get. So this is the board where the whole power section will be built from and I already added the screw terminal strips, the fuses and some current sensors over here. There will be a whole bunch over here and a whole bunch over there, but I still did not get them in. And then of course we have our motor drivers, which these are all need to be connected to. And looking at the number of power sections, this will be a lot. So I have a lot of those and I need to position them somewhere. But one thing what I found is when I use a wire, let me just grab a simple wire, and I would go from here to here, so let's assume this is the wire which is connected to this motor driver, and then it passes through here, then go to here, and then we go over here. That will produce, because it would be two wires for each uh, power section, that will create a uh, magnetic field around the wire because it's blocked. Um, it's a block pulse which is on there. And these are current sensors which work on magnetic fields. So the current flows through it, the magnetic field is uh, generated within the uh, hull sensor here and then it is detected. So, what I actually need to do is, all the wires will need to go to one side of the board or the other side of the board over there and then go to each individual connection. So that is a challenge of course. Uh, the wires will be twisted and then will go that way to fit in here because they need to be connected to that. So that is one thing what I need to do. The other thing, I have the Arduino position here. So this is the Arduino. It's an Arduino Mega with a shield which screw terminals on it. So I can easily connect uh, the wires to it. This is the heart of my whole control board. Uh, I need to check where I would like to position these. These current sensors, they have an analog output. The problem is I have 30 current sensors going to be positioned over here. The Arduino Mega only has 16 analog inputs. So we need to resolve that. And the way to resolve that is using a multiplexer. So this is a multiplexer. And this multiplexer has 16 outputs. So I can use 16 outputs, go to one pin, and then only have one pin, analog pin, on the Arduino. But with that, because I'm using 16, I need to have four control pins. So four control pins here need to be for controlling these 16 pins. But since these will be um, about 30 connectors, I will be using more of these, so three of these, and that will also eliminate the um, way that the um, analog pin or analog output from this sensor goes directly to the Arduino. Because this can be shortened here, and then we can shield it with one wire to the Arduino. And I will show you that in a later video, how I'm gonna program it 
to read uh, either a block of 8 or a block of 16 of these sensors so that I only have to use one, two or three pins on the Arduino to read the current to see if there is a train running on a certain track. I did some checking on what I need and how we're gonna go forward. So I did check in regards to the number of power sections because as you can see I have a lot of strips here and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven power strips. Let me see one, two, three, four, five, six. So that would mean that I am able to have 36 power sections connected to this board. But I was thinking, well, maybe I can do it a little bit different. Because I have the main track, I have a shadow station, I have a cabin's yard, um, which is the top on, on top of the main track, and then I have a staging yard. But I thought, you know what, if I'm going to leave the cabin's yard and the staging yard out of it, maybe I can reduce the number of components on the board. So I did some calculations. So with the power sections on the main track, I have 14 power sections. Then on the shadow station, I'm gonna abbreviate shadow station, but SD, shadow station track, I have six. But then I also have tracks from going to Kevin's yard and I have a, a set power section going into the staging yard. So going into Kevin's yard, so let me, uh, um, Kevin's yard, that will be two. I'm having a track going into and I'm having a track going out to, and that is over the bridge. And then I have one track, which is going into the, um, the staging yard. So staging yard. So that would mean in total 23 power sections. So I thought, you know what, I'm gonna put one power section to it, so I'm gonna put 24 power sections on this board. Which means that I can actually remove this strip. Because these are six power sections, six power sections, six power sections, six power sections, and this strip. So I'm saving a little bit of space here at the at the end which I can use for wiring or for any other thing. So with that said, with the 24 power sections, that would mean I need 12 motor drivers. So that would be these. And I'm going to position them over here. So that means that the power is outside here, so coming from here it goes out into this lane and then um, going out to the track. So that would be six over here and six over here. The power sections, they are controlled by PWM signals and for that I need to have the servo driver. So one servo driver can contain 16 uh, sections and I only have 12 on each side so I only have to have one servo driver here and one servo driver here. 
As you can see I put these pins up because I would like to have the pins pointing towards the motor drivers. Next up, I need 24 input output pins to control each output. It needs to have two pins, one to say it's uh, for the two pins. You have four options for that. One is to put power on the track, reverse or forward. And the other one is to, put, uh, to remove power. And I need 24 of them. I have a PCA, um, what is it, 8575 80, uh, with 16 pins and then this is a 74 which has 8 pins so 16 plus 8 is 24. So I'm going to do that the same over here. So this would be the 16 pin over here. We're going to solder the pins to it and then they are directly connected to the motor drivers. So in the middle of this all I have my Arduino Mega, the whole stack. So that's the Arduino Mega at the bottom. But I have screw terminals on top uh, on the shield. Then I have the uh, uh, SD card in which the locations of the trains will be stored so that the system uh, recognizes okay the train was there but I also need to have the analog signals move to here and I thought you know what these lines are very long to go to the Arduino Mega for this so I'm gonna add a multiplexer and each multiplexer can control, uh, control 16 Pause. Well, we only have 24 because 16 times 2 is 32, so I only need to address 12 of them onto the Arduino. And then I have two lines which are shielded going directly into the Arduino, which saves a lot. But with that multiplexing, I will uh, show you that in another video uh, how to read that. So. But this already looks a little bit better than it was before on under, uh, at the underside of my layout. So with this, I also need to have an analyzer. So this is an Arduino uh, Nano. This will function as an analyzer for the DCC EX signal, or actually the DCC signal, which I'm going to sniff. And this will send the information to the Arduino Mega telling, okay, this is this train, it looks it up on the SD card, uh, that train is running on that track, so I need to check if there are any trains around that track, if I can move the train forward or backward. In between the interface of the analyzer and the DCC EX station, there will be a optocoupler circuit because the DCC EX station or actually the output of the DCC EX cannot be directly connected to a nano because that would blow out the nano itself because you have 16 volts out and the nano can only control 5 volts plus uh, it is a free floating signal which means there is no really a ground signal connected to it. So this would be then the DCC AX station. Um, it will be a different one which is currently on the board, but that's fine. And this one will get the information from JMRI. This is in between. That one translates it. And this one controls the power to the track. And then we have a power strip over here. So this is how it's going to look like. And we will do that in the upcoming videos. We're going to work on this layout. First what we're going to do is we're going to um, use the 10 uh, which I have here. I'm going to move them over to here so that I can, when I have a new set coming in, add it uh, on the board as well. I still have enough of the uh, fuses. Then we're going to wire this up. And then we're going to start programming the Arduino step by step. First in reading 
these sensors because if that works then it's fine um, and then we will build upon that to control the power to the track so if you like this type of videos please give it a thumbs up and as said this will be a series on building this power section um, so the next video will be the cabling uh, of this so moving this over to here and then start wiring it from here onto the Arduino so stay tuned for the next video and thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one thank you and goodbye Thank you.